Welcome to another episode of the Capital Playbook. My name is Charles Williams, and I am the owner and managing member of Pioneer Realty Capital, and we're excited to be with you again today uh, to talk about a, an exciting subject. Uh, today, we're going to talk about land. Uh, how do you buy land? How do you create value with it? How do people benefit uh, from the, tran the, the transaction involving land? Uh, and we have an uh, expert that we brought in, Mr. Mike Jones, uh, or some might call him Judge Jones. Uh, he's a sitting judge, but he's also an expert in commercial real estate. Mr. Jones, it's a pleasure to have you. Thank you. Allow me for me on here as well. Thank yeah. you very much. Yeah. And so before we get into our discussion today, uh, we have those housekeeping items that we always talk about. Um, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share. Uh, that way we can continue to bring content to you uh, that will absolutely prove beneficial. Uh, but today, let's talk about land. Now, um, Mr. Jones, um, you were telling me earlier that one of you, you serve commercial real estate in several areas. You're an instructor mm -hmm. uh, for uh, continuing education credits. Yes. Um, you're a busy man. You're, you're a judge, justice of the peace. Um, you've been in real estate a number of years. About uh, 12 years. 12 years. Um, and you work some on the tenant rep side, uh, but you also have this niche uh, with regards to land. Now, um, so oftentimes we drive by a piece of land and we just see grass and dirt. But when you drive by a piece of land, sometimes you see something different. Absolutely. What, what do you see when, you, when you're looking at land? What are you looking for? And what do you see when you drive by certain areas? Uh, yeah, usually when you see raw, undeveloped land, you look at future use. Mm -hmm. um, you look at development, how the economy is shaping, what direction developers are going. I may just look at a land and I can say, you know what, that can be a pad site and it can be a restaurant on it. Or I can look at that piece of land and I say, you know what, that can be a great multi-use or, uh, or mixed-use property. Mm -hmm. And so given the area access to the highways, um, if it's near you know, any type of municipal institutions, wherever it's at, uh, I become a visionary and figure out, okay, well, this land can do this or it can do that. And so it's very important, especially when I see land, okay, I say, well, you know, in my community, what do I want there? And when I put myself and put that hat on, it allows me to kind of, you know, uh, see directions for what other cities and other neighborhoods would like in their lands. And, and I'm sorry, up in their neighborhoods. Mm -hmm. So now, so let's say that you, you drive by in, in an area, you see a piece of land and, and you see an opportunity there. Mm -hmm. um, now you don't own the land, uh, so what? How do you take your vision and turn it into opportunity? Um, easily pick up the phone, you know, and call the owners, see what's going on with that property, um, see if there's a way we can go ahead and do some partnership, bring in some outside developers or investors who are interested, who have or who have some type of interest in the community or in that land or in that area, mm -hmm. and that's how you kind of get in contact and, and those conversations bring deals started. Okay. So, so you identify a piece of land, uh, get in contact with the owner, and, and what is your pitch to the owner? Uh, when, you know, let's say I own 30 acres of land and, and you think it's in a great location, you're going to give me a call up, and, and what's your pitch to me? Actually, there's no specific pitch. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody's different, and really, I just you know talk to us and know we know each other. Yeah. <laughs> but honestly, you know, um, to make it simple is uh, just be yourself. I'd be myself. Talk to individuals. I'm very personable, so I can kind of relate to almost anybody. Mm -hmm. um, see what your plans is. You know, literally straight up, straight to the point. Hey, you know, this is Mike with this brokerage. Uh, what are you doing with this property? What you have your plans on it? Did you know there's incentives in the area? Did you know people are we're looking at these type of properties mm -hmm. and then engage in conversation. Okay, so before contacting me, you would uh, you would uh, kind of arm yourself with some knowledge to determine if there are any incentives in the area. Right? Yes, yes, um, I would check the current um, the current municipality or city's um, current zoning charts. Mm -hmm. If they have any future zoning plans, any comprehensive plans, see what direction the city is going. Mm -hmm. So, so now, why are cities motivated to provide incentives uh, for some properties and maybe not for others? Well, it depends on location. Mm -hmm. um, some location could be a part of the city that's been neglected, mm -hmm. and so they may want to bring incentives to drive forces in those areas. You know, case in point, you can have a city that could be lacking in um, industrial mm -hmm. and it's majority just retail. 
And so they would want to go ahead and figure out a way, okay, what can we bring in? Instead of to bring a smaller industrial park, mm-hmm. brings in, you know, that can bring in logistics, that can bring in uh, sales tax, it can, of course, bring in more property tax if you rezone it, mm-hmm. um, or, you know, if you build up on the, the land. Okay. So so the uh, city's incentivized because they can grow their tax base. Absolutely. Uh, if, if it's the right, right piece of property. So therefore, it makes sense for them to make an investment in the way of these incentives to motivate uh, a landowner or perhaps a developer to come in and develop in that particular area. Absolutely, because then you bring in land, you can bring in jobs. Mm-hmm. Bro- jobs, of course, brings in revenue, mm-hmm. uh, whether that's daytime revenue from you know, from your workers going to the local you know restaurant to buy food to eat on lunch, mm-hmm. or it can be that you know that gas is being spent as they are exiting out and going back to the communities. Okay, so now. Um, in partnering with the city, because it seems like uh, they're a key component potentially to the success of any development. Who are you talking to? Do you go directly to the mayor? Do you go, uh, you know, to the meter maid? I mean, you know, there's a range <laughs> of, of people. Who 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 are you having these um, discussions with to determine if if it makes sense for the city to make an investment in in that transaction like that? Yeah, and and. and the- Answer that's all of that. You know, I would literally contact my local city council person and say, okay, okay what are the plans? Because they may have some insight that they can share mm-hmm. that's not public yet. Mm-hmm. I would also check with the Economic Development Corporation, mm-hmm. the EDCs. What um, are they doing? What incentives are out there? What do they have plans in a niche? Because mm-hmm. some things they can talk about and some things they can have contracts for that they can't talk about. Mm-hmm. Okay. So so you're, you're involving the Economic Development Council uh, or corporation and um, and perhaps uh, some some folks in the, the city government. Also, you can also get with the local uh, brokers in the areas that own portion of the land. Mm-hmm. Get a lot of those owners and, and and see what their plans is as well. So it's a deal where you want to hit it from both from all different sides. Mm-hmm. So the more information you get, now you're very prepared to go and talk to that landowner mm-hmm. uh, about uh, what could potentially be done with their land. Now, now we uh, mentioned uh, very briefly the importance of zoning. Mm-hmm. Uh, why is zoning so important? Uh, extremely important. Um, if you have a piece of land and it's zoned, let's just say it's zoned industrial for mm-hmm. some odd reason, but however the land sits, or it could be zoned farm and ranch, whatever it is, mm-hmm. but in the highest best use really can be a restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, you want, or you know, if you have a land and you want to put a restaurant in and it's zoned for industrial, mm-hmm. um, you have to go before a zoning board to make that change, or you would have to put a special application in for a special use permit mm-hmm. for a permitted use, which still would be subject to the city's, the local municipality's approval. So mm-hmm. it's important to know the, the zoning because you buy a piece of land, if you sell it, you know, you may not do anything with it. Right, right. So ne- let's say that if I uh, identified a piece of land. Uh, that is a uh, zone farm and ranch, you mm-hmm. know, uh, ag, or we call it ag, right? Right. And, um, you know, but I'm able to go in and um, get the land uh, rezoned, let's say R2 or R3, uh, okay. high density residential, right? Where mm-hmm. you build apartments uh, in, in that area. Um, does that impact the value of that land when I, when I get it, change the zoning? from uh, ag to uh, a higher density residential? Yes, it, it would. Um, you would want to confirm, well, yes, uh, quick answer, um, because that when that land uh, zoning changes, that mm-hmm. land becomes more valuable because you can be, put different businesses on it. Mm-hmm. If you can have just a farm ranch land, that land may have very low tax base and you couldn't collect much off of the taxes off right. of it. You can change it to, let's just say retail or whatever, that land become desirable, attractable, especially if it's nor near a hard corner or intersection. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and that's very interesting because I've seen uh, transactions before being on the finance side, where we'll have someone go uh, buy a piece of land, maybe it's a zoned ag, mm-hmm. and they'll work real hard to get it uh, get the zoning changed, and that could take a number. Of, it could take some years to do mm-hmm. that, um, uh, at least a year uh, to do it. Uh, but they go through the process of getting the zoning change, but immediately, without any changes being made to the land at all, once that zoning is changed, that land can sometimes be worth double, triple, or even more. You ever seen that? Yeah, yes, I have. Yeah. Yes, I, and absolutely. Then, and and then they turn around and take the value mm-hmm. that they've just created by getting it zoned, 
and they use that as their equity to go and build what they were looking to build. Um, and so um, it, uh, now how does that generally work with an owner? If, if I were to go and uh, let's say, Mr. Jones, you own this 30 acre track, um, you're willing to sell it for a million dollars. I come in, I put a contract for a million bucks, but uh, and I'll put up some earnest money, but I want it under contract for six months. Mm -hmm. And How would that work? Yeah. I mean, that's negotiation because everything is negotiable. Right. Uh, it depends on what terms you're in that contract. You put up for six months, that I means you tie the land up. I don't tie it uh, up. I mean, then you got to have your due diligence period on there mm. if you're going to have any due diligence extensions or contract extensions. Um, dealing with developers, I mean, that's a lot of their motive is going to be to tie the land up because you can go through zoning, check out the land, environmental study, things like that. Mm. But you know, on the brokerage side, you know, representing for a landlord, uh, uh, I'm sorry, for representing for an owner, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure that uh, most due diligence is done in the front end if, if possible, mm -hmm. uh, because the zoning uh, process can be, you know, it could be a couple of months or it could be, you know, like I said, it could be a year or so. Depend mm -hmm. Zoning also is also uh, is a process that is no guarantee. Mm -hmm. um, you have certain stipulations, certain packages you have to apply for and then of course you go through a zoning board mm -hmm. and they approve it then you then you may have to go before the city council go ahead and you know uh, to help approve the zoning so it's a lot of different factors mm -hmm. and you want to get with that local municipality to see that process yeah because every city is different yeah yeah and and so but i i do see the potential of tying up a piece of land getting the zoning now with the zoning change is worth significantly more mm -hmm. you turn around finance it based on its current value with the new zoning and essentially you get a hundred percent financing uh for the property because of the value you created that's phenomenal <laughs> <laughs> that, that, have you ever seen that uh, happen like that i have not i know it does happen yeah uh, i've seen it happen a lot <laughs> mm -hmm. i think you're on the finance side, right? on the finance side <laughs> so, right yeah, yeah. Uh, and, and so, but it's one of those uh, interesting things. Now, it may sound easy, but it's not easy. No, no. Uh, just going through the zoning process, and as you mentioned, there are no guarantees, so there's risk there. And uh, as a developer, you're going to be spending money. Uh, you have to, you know, get a topographical study. Mm -hmm. uh, you're going to have to uh, have an engineer come in and, and do a site plan. Uh, you have to write up all these reports on what you plan to do. Some cities may even require you to have your architect do some renderings mm -hmm. of what you're going to do before they will uh, consider that zoning request change. So you may have been out of pocket, you know, a couple hundred grand, um, you know, uh, in, in trying to get the zoning changed, and there's no guarantee that it could be changed. Absolutely. But the reward is that if you can get it changed, it significantly increases the value of that property, and now you're able to go back and um, you know you you have it under contract for a fixed amount. Mm -hmm. You pay that guy off. You know he doesn't know you just create a whole lot of value <laughs> on his pro on property that you don't even own, yeah, <laughs> right? Absolutely. You know, but uh, but that that's kind of how it works. Um, what are now you are primarily um, doing deals in the southern sector of Dallas? Mm -hmm. I do them all over, but yeah, primary I uh, form my area. Okay, I think, go ahead. Well, no. Well, uh, my question to you, as the expert in that area, uh, because we're seeing some things, uh, but I'd love to get your opinion on this. Uh, what's happening in the southern sector? Um, and, and, and let me let me before we answer that question, let me just kind of uh, give you a frame of reference why I ask. What I've noticed is that uh, on the northern border. Mm -hmm. of city, the cities that touch the uh, Dallas's northern borders, they're all starting to go vertical, mid-rise, high-rise, mm -hmm. so forth. Look at your Addison's, look at your Garland's, and that's where all the entertainment is, that's where all the restaurants are. And even if you live in the southern part of Dallas, if you want to go in for entertainment, you're driving to Dallas, either in downtown Deep Ellum, or you're going past that mm -hmm. to the northern side. But we have all this land on the southern side. What's going on with with that? What's happening down there? Um, short answer: A lot of land landowners are just holding on to it. Mm. One, because they see value you know, coming on up. Um, a lot of a lot of situations, you can have a land a landowner that can own multiple. Let's say I know there's one of them in the southern one city. One landowner may own about 
think like 300 acres. Mm -hmm. um, and you know that's going to be particularly the way that the city sits. It's going to be more likely. It's going to be. It's more likely it's going to be uh, residential homes. Mm -hmm. But of course, it's all undeveloped raw land, so you got to build, bring in utilities. Mm -hmm. um, other cities as well. Um, they are subject to the city councils redeveloping the city's images mm -hmm. and rede redeveloping their missions as far as what they want the city to be. Mm -hmm. And so you get that, you have a mix of the, the, the higher price of real estate, literally, of, you know, of course, everybody running from California coming on in. Mm -hmm. And I've literally had land, for instance, I would get waves. I have land listed and next thing you know, I'll get somebody blowing my phone up and wanted to pay top dollar for the land for about two weeks straight. Mm -hmm. And then you'll hear nothing. Mm -hmm. So it, it's just a situation, the way the market, the demand of what land is what's driving it. Mm -hmm. And of course, you get the investors wanting to come in and pour in. You have 1031 exchanges that are out here because uh, individuals are selling land, wanting, want land to invest into. So there's a lot of mm -hmm. different factors, and they're starting to see the, the, the southern sector is, is a, a, a good piece to invest into. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, yeah, I wonder if, if we're going to start seeing a more of a balance of uh, developments coming out of the ground on the the southern uh, border of Dallas, at like we see on the northern side, mm -hmm. um, and uh, because there's certainly a lot of land out there. Um, now we're in this um, new economy where uh, inflation is getting high, uh, interest rates are getting high. Mm -hmm. um, how how is that in, impacting your business? Are you seeing that? Uh, there are more or less sellers on the market? Uh, are there more or less buyers on the market? What impact do you see this new economic environment having uh, on, on your business right now? Well, when, when you say land, uh, the impact would be the cost of construction. Mm. Um, so if you have a situation where the person is interested in land, they may have, at this point buy it and hold on to it mm -hmm. and don't do any construction to it because the construction price can be so high. Mm -hmm. That's for the most part that I see um, in the southern sector or just in general with land, the mm -hmm. cost. It may be beneficial for you to wait until maybe a couple, about a year till inflation goes down before you mm -hmm. start building because mm -hmm. then – and when you do that, cost goes up. Then, of course, you know financing goes up because mm -hmm. you got to finance the deal. So yeah, yeah, it, it's, it's interesting because I, I do see in the financial markets a, a pullback uh, or um, a probably a little less cons or, or more conservative underwriting uh, with projects, especially development projects. Mm -hmm. But we still have this really, really high demand, especially for housing. Mm -hmm. um, and what what it looks like to me is if we stop developing, you know, no matter if it's uh, in the northern part of town or in the southern part of town, if we stop developing, uh, you're still going to have high demand, mm -hmm. you know. So that's just going to push, you know, uh, rents much, much, much higher. Um, and it's going to kind of exacerbate a problem that we've been trying to dig out of since 2012, uh, the previous economic crisis, mm -hmm. you know. Um, now, uh, in, but I do see that there potentially may be an opportunity uh, in this market where landowners may be willing to accept less for their land. Uh, what do you think, or, or you think the opposite may be true? Yes, um, client of mine, land's been listed about over a year, uh, wants to get from under it and buy, buy other things. So mm. um, you do have the opportunity for, and honestly the price is starting to decrease, even on the uh, residential, side of the home price are starting to decrease mm -hmm. before when you would get over a hundred thousand over the next some prices now starting to go down to maybe about twenty thousand mm -hmm. um same thing on the land side before <clears throat> people would want to go ahead and hurry up and pay that listing price mm -hmm. for the land or a little bit over um now it's starting to dwindle down a little bit mm -hmm. so um of course the market is changing um and of course you know again everything drives on supply and demand yeah Right. Yeah, so it's be interesting to see see what happens uh, as things come up. Well, I can tell you that, um, you know, we're on the finance side of business, and but we're also developers as well. So we buy land. Uh, we own quite a bit of land you know, here in Texas. And, well, I guess just only in Texas. We only develop in Texas. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that's all we're interested in right now. But um, it is interesting to see these new market dynamics come in. Mm -hmm. um, how long do you think this cycle, this inflationary cycle that we're entering into, 
how long do you think it's going to last? On the real estate side, yeah, I personally see maybe about a couple of years. Okay, uh, and, from what I see, mm-hmm. you know, and and that's boots on the ground, out and about, you know, and of course, doing deals with different owners, talking mm-hmm. with different um, uh, financial institutions. So I would say about a couple of years. Two, I would say two to maybe three for stuff to kind of level off a little mm-hmm. bit. Because yeah. now the impact you're going to have now with a lot of properties is now foreclosures are going to be yeah. coming out. Yeah. That's the next thing that's coming down the pipeline. Yeah, yeah. And uh, that's certainly the case uh, because rates are starting to go up. Um, you know, and so... and well, th- Not just that. On the judicial side, which is one of the good things I guess I can point out is all these uh, uh, moratoriums and acts that would that you know that um held individuals from uh, from um uh, federally backed mortgages mm. to uh let's just say evict individuals mm. now those well, those have expired so you're going to see more people at the doorsteps of the county warehouses buying mm. properties foreclosed properties okay and that's starting to increase now wow so there might be some opportunity hopefully you kept your powder dry uh, it kept a little money in your pocket. Now you can go create some opportunity. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, Judge Jones, thank you so much for being on our show. Absolutely. Uh, we certainly appreciate you coming and sharing your expertise, uh, specifically with regards to land, uh, because that's really the starting point, identifying a piece of property, uh, understanding the best use of that property, and then bringing all the right parties to that uh, who have an incentive to participate uh, to this uh, party, if you will, mm-hmm. and uh, and then creating something of value for the community. Absolutely. Yeah. So thank you for being with us, and we look forward to seeing you next time on our next show. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe. Support what we're doing here on the Capital Playbook. <laughs>